What if the universe has been hiding its most unsettling secret right under our noses? What if every breath you take, every atom that makes you, is only here because of a cosmic coin flip, one that should have gone the other way? And what if, right now, in the sprawling tunnels beneath Geneva, physicists at CERN are seeing hints that this impossible imbalance is far stranger than we ever imagined? Because something strange is happening with antimatter. And if these clues hold up, the story of the universe itself may have to be rewritten. The cosmic puzzle that shouldn't exist. Let's start with the most uncomfortable fact in physics. You should not exist. Neither should I. Nor should this screen, this room, or anything else be made of matter. According to the neat and merciless laws of physics, the Big Bang should have rolled out matter and antimatter in perfect equal measure, like dance partners arriving in lockstep. For every proton, there should have been an antiproton. For every electron, its shadow twin, the positron. For every atom that might one day become a planet or a person, there should have been its mirror image waiting to cancel it out. And here's the catch. Matter and antimatter don't coexist politely. They are mortal enemies. The instant they meet, they annihilate each other, vanishing into pure energy. Nothing but a bright flash of light. Equal amounts of both mean no survivors. No stars burning in the darkness. No galaxies swirling across space. No Earth. No trees. No coffee mugs. No us. Just a cold, empty universe lit once by a brief, violent glow, and then silence forever. But clearly that's not what happened. Somehow, impossibly, the scales tipped. In the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, matter gained the slightest, almost imperceptible advantage over antimatter. Just enough to leave leftovers. Just enough to seed a universe where hydrogen could fuse into helium, where clouds of gas could collapse into stars, and where billions of years later, life could wonder how it all began. Why did matter win? No one knows. Physicists have given the mystery a name, the baryon asymmetry problem. But a name is not an answer. Solving it would mean explaining not just how the cosmos works, but why it exists at all. That's why the world's largest physics lab, CERN, has spent decades hunting antimatter like a detective chasing the one suspect who knows the truth. Chasing Ghosts at CERN Beneath the Swiss-French border, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, better known to the world as CERN, operates the most ambitious and expensive science experiments ever attempted. Most people know it as the home of the Large Hadron Collider, the colossal ring of magnets that, in 2012, smashed particles together hard enough to reveal the Higgs boson. The so-called God Particle. That discovery alone secured CERN's place in history. But hidden in its labyrinth of underground tunnels and sterile white laboratories is another mission. Quieter, yet possibly even more profound. Chasing the elusive fingerprints of antimatter. CERN is one of the very few places on Earth where antimatter can be manufactured, tamed, and trapped long enough to be studied. Normally, antimatter is nature's most fleeting ghost. It vanishes the moment it touches ordinary matter, annihilated in a burst of light. But here, scientists have built specialized machines like the Antiproton Decelerator, a device designed to catch speeding antiprotons, slow them down, and corral them like wild horses. Once captured, these particles are coaxed into unions with positrons, their electron counterparts, forming atoms of antihydrogen, the mirror version of the simplest element in the universe. Why go to such trouble? Because the tiniest difference between hydrogen and antihydrogen, the way they fall in a gravitational field, the way their light shifts, the way their charges balance, could crack open the mystery of why we exist at all. If antimatter reveals even a subtle quirk, a deviation from its mirror rules, that anomaly might explain how matter gained the upper hand in the early universe. And lately, the data trickling out of CERN's antimatter labs has been anything but boring. Each new result hints at possibilities that could either confirm physics as we know it, or force us to rewrite the script of the cosmos itself. CP Violation – The Universe Plays Favorites One of the leading suspects in the case of Why Are We Here is something called CP Violation. Here's the idea in simple terms. In physics, we expect matter and antimatter to behave like mirror images. Swap matter for antimatter, 
the C for charge symmetry, and flip left for right, the P for parity symmetry. And the universe should look the same. That's CP symmetry. But nature doesn't always cooperate. Sometimes particles and their antiparticles don't decay in perfectly mirrored ways. That's CP violation, the cosmic thumb on the scale that could, in principle, explain how matter survived the Big Bang. We've seen CP violation before, in Messens, particles made of quark-antiquark -quark pairs. But the effect was tiny, too small to explain the amount of matter in the universe today. So scientists kept digging, and then in 2025, CERN's LHCb experiment announced something extraordinary. For the first time, they had seen CP violation in baryon particles made of three quarks, like protons and neutrons. Specifically, they studied the decays of the lambda B baryon. The asymmetry they measured was about 2.5%, with a statistical significance of 5.2 sigma, the gold standard for a discovery in particle physics. This was huge, a completely new place where the universe breaks symmetry, a completely new lever that could explain why matter outlived antimatter. But here's the kicker. Even this effect, as thrilling as it is, still isn't big enough. It adds to the puzzle, but doesn't solve it. It's like finding a new fingerprint at a crime scene. Exciting, but the case remains open. Which is why physicists are looking at antimatter from another angle. Does antimatter fall up? If there's one test that sounds like pure science fiction, it's this. What happens when you drop antimatter? Gravity pulls everything down, right? Apples fall, planets orbit stars, you and I stay firmly on the ground. But what if antimatter played by different rules? That's what CERN's Alpha-G experiment set out to test. By trapping atoms of antihydrogen and carefully letting them go in a vertical magnetic trap, they could measure whether antimatter falls the same way as matter. In 2023, they announced their results. Within the precision of the experiment, antihydrogen does fall down. Gravity doesn't seem to repel antimatter. That may sound like a boring result, but it's revolutionary in another way. For decades, physicists have speculated about whether antimatter could have anti-gravity effects. Alpha-G showed that, at least for now, the laws of gravity treat antimatter the same as matter. But here's the strange twist. The precision of these measurements is still improving, and subtle differences might yet emerge. Alpha-G isn't done and neither are its sister experiments, like G-Bar, which are also probing antimatter under gravity with increasing sensitivity. If any tiny anomaly shows up, it would shake physics to its core. Taking antimatter on the road. As if wrangling antimatter inside a lab weren't already difficult enough, CERN has been quietly testing something that sounds even more impossible. Moving antimatter around like cargo. It's one thing to trap it in magnetic bottles deep underground, where every variable is carefully controlled. It's another thing entirely to pack it up and take it for a spin outside the world's most sophisticated physics lab. In late 2024, the BASE collaboration, the team responsible for some of the most precise antimatter measurements ever made, unveiled a new kind of technology, a portable particle trap. Think of it as a high-tech suitcase designed to hold particles for hours, maybe even days, without letting them escape or decay. For the first trial, the scientists kept things safe by using ordinary protons as test passengers. After all, you don't start your first road trip with a trunk full of antimatter. But the real target is much more ambitious, antiprotons. If researchers can successfully capture and transport these fragile particles, it would mean that antimatter is no longer chained to CERN's underground tunnels. Instead, it could be shipped to other labs around the world, opening the possibility for entirely new experiments. That might sound like a logistical detail, but in physics, logistics can change everything. Until now, antimatter experiments have been stuck in one location, forcing every question and every test to revolve around a single facility. Mobility changes the rules of the game. And here's where it gets even stranger. If antimatter can travel, then so can the questions we ask of it. It means that one of the rarest, most mysterious forms of matter in the universe could soon be on the move, carried like contraband across borders. And that leads directly to one of the boldest and strangest ideas in the pipeline. The Puma Project, antimatter meets exotic matter. 
Imagine this. You build a portable antimatter trap. You load it with antiprotons at CERN. Then, like a bizarre physics courier service, you drive it across campus to another facility. The Isold Lab, where exotic, short-lived nuclei are produced. That's the plan of the Puma Project, short for Antiproton Unstable Matter Annihilation. The idea is breathtaking. By letting antiprotons interact with exotic nuclei, scientists can probe the skins of these unstable atoms, studying their neutron distributions in ways no other method can achieve. Why does this matter for antimatter? Because annihilation patterns could reveal subtle differences in how matter and antimatter interact. Another clue to the asymmetry puzzle. If successful, Puma would be the first time antimatter is used as a kind of precision probe, not just a curiosity to trap and stare at. And if you think transporting antimatter sounds dangerous, don't worry. The quantities are so small that even if the trap failed, the release would be harmless. The danger isn't explosions, it's the fact that the data could explode our understanding of the universe. The bigger picture, why it all feels strange. When you step back and look at the last few years of antimatter research at CERN, the picture that emerges is both exhilarating and deeply puzzling. Progress is undeniable. We're seeing experiments succeed that once sounded like science fiction, but each advance seems to deepen the mystery rather than resolve it. Take CP violation, for example. Physicists have now observed it in places they hadn't before, a critical step in explaining why matter gained the upper hand in the early universe. But the effect is too small, like a faint whisper in a hurricane, nowhere near enough to explain the vast imbalance we see today. Or consider gravity. After decades of speculation, CERN confirmed that antimatter falls downward, just like matter does. That might sound obvious, but proving it was monumental. Yet the nagging question remains, how could there still be the tiniest, almost imperceptible deviations? If so, they might be the key to rewriting physics from the ground up. Then there's mobility. The first serious steps towards transporting antimatter outside CERN's walls may look like a technical footnote, but they're not. They represent a revolution in access. Suddenly, the most elusive material in the universe might become a traveling guest at labs around the globe. And now we stand at the edge of even stranger tests, colliding antiprotons with exotic forms of matter, probing realms that no textbook has prepared us for. These experiments could uncover entirely new laws of physics or forces we don't even have names for. Put together, all of these points point to an unsettling truth. Antimatter is not behaving in a way that neatly fits into the universe we thought we understood. The deeper we dig, the sharper the puzzle becomes. And in science, that sharpening is often the telltale sign you're standing on the edge of a breakthrough. Why it matters to you. It's tempting to file antimatter away in the category of abstract physics oddities, something exotic and remote, locked inside CERN's underground tunnels and only relevant to scientists in lab coats. But this puzzle is not just about them, it's about you. Every atom in your body, every cell that makes up your skin and bones, every photon of light that's ever reached your eyes, all of it exists only because, in the first split second of the universe, matter won a cosmic coin toss. For reasons no one yet understands, matter was given the slightest edge over antimatter, just enough to survive annihilation. Without that advantage, the balance sheet would have canceled out to zero. No planets, no stars, no chemistry, no life. No you, no me, just an empty void where something never got the chance to exist. That's why the experiments at CERN are not trivia for physics nerds. They're investigations into the most fundamental question imaginable. Why is there something rather than nothing? Each new test, whether it's measuring CP violation, timing the fall of antihydrogen, or attempting to ship antiprotons across borders, is another tug at the cosmic thread that holds reality together. And lately, those threads are starting to unravel in ways no one predicted. If antimatter behaves differently from matter, even in the smallest way, it could rewrite our understanding of physics, the Big Bang, and the conditions that allowed you to be here reading these words. It means reality itself is stranger, less stable, and far more fascinating than we ever assumed. So when scientists say something strange is happening with antimatter, they're not exaggerating. They're telling us that the very foundation of existence is wobbling under scrutiny. 
And if history has taught us anything, when physics starts wobbling, revolutions tend to follow. The next big twist. In the coming years, CERN will push further. LHCB will refine its CP violation measurements. Alpha-G and G-Bar will push the precision of gravity tests. BASE will continue to prepare for true anti-proton transport. And PUMA will attempt its daring experiment with exotic matter. Each step may look small, but together, they could rewrite the opening chapter of the universe's story. Will we finally understand why matter won, or will we discover that something even stranger is at play? New physics that reshapes our view of everything? For now, the only thing certain is that antimatter isn't done surprising us. So stay curious, because the next headline out of CERN might just tell us why we exist at all. If this journey through antimatter made you question the universe a little more than before, don't let it stop here. Share this mystery with someone who loves a good puzzle. Leave your thoughts. Could antimatter still hold the key to everything? And if you want to keep unraveling the strangest secrets of the cosmos, make sure you're subscribed, because this story is only just beginning. Stay blessed and stay curious.